Hi, welcome back to Film Story Recaps. Today I am going to explain the movie called The Twin. Released in the year 2022. The film begins with a car driving through a cornfield and the sound of a happy family inside. Because this is a horror film, happy shit is not permitted, so we cut to them getting into a car accident in which one of the two children is killed. We then see the remaining family, which includes mother Rachel, father Anthony, and their surviving child Elliot, at Nathan's gravestone. Following the tragedy, the family relocates to Finland, specifically to Anthony's hometown near the country's northeastern border. As Anthony and Rachel arrive at their new home, Elliot goes off to explore on his own. Rachel realizes she can't hear Elliot and they begin to panic. Rachel comes across Elliot by some swings and freaks out on him, but apologizes when he tells her she's hurting him. Later, as Anthony assists the movers in arranging their belongings, Rachel looks around the house and discovers some old photos of dead children propped up on the mantel, nothing says decor like dead children. As Anthony enters the room, she begins to cry because seeing dead children reminds her of her own. We then learn that the house was once a rectory, which means it housed priests and nuns, which is fine, but how does that explain the dead kid photos? Rachel goes off to look for Elliot upstairs eventually following his calls to an attic room. While she searches for him in a closet, there's a jump scare when he shows up on the bed next to her. Elliot tells her he wants the attic to be his new room and though apprehensive, Rachel appears to agree but wants to discuss it with Anthony first. Elliot asks Rachel if she and Anthony love him as much as they love Nathan that night while putting Elliot to sleep in his attic room. Rachel assures him that they do, and that even though Nathan is away, he will always be with them. Elliot, clearly still grieving his brother's death, inquires if he is always with them, and who did they bury. This is a legitimate question from a befuddled child who doesn't understand death, but the background music prangs as if we should be terrified of it. Rachel appears to be taken aback by the question, but she is distracted when she notices Elliot is hiding one of Nathan's ball in a maze puzzle toys under his blanket. Elliot asks to keep the toy and Rachel agrees. Back with Anthony, he and Rachel argue over how to deal with Elliot's processing of Nathan's death as Rachel has agreed to put a bed in Elliot's room for Nathan. That night Rachel has a nightmare about attending a funeral where a child is being buried. As we pan over to Rachel, the sound of Elliot or Nathan screaming is heard from within as something bangs inside the casket. When Rachel awakens, she informs Anthony that in the nightmare, it is Elliot, not Nathan, who is in the casket. Since Nathan's death, this appears to be a common nightmare. Later, the family buries some of Nathan's belongings near the house, and Elliot decides to bury the ball in a maze toy he had earlier. Anthony then looks up at the attic window, where we see two beds and a creepy-ass photo of Nathan. Anthony takes the family out on the lake and leads them to a rock with a red handprint. He tells them the story his father told him about how the prints were left by cavemen and how if you place your hand on them while making a wish, your wish will come true. Elliot makes a wish while placing his hand on the print. The next day, Anthony is typing on a typewriter. Elliot is playing with someone in his room, and Rachel hears him. She knocks on his door and asks who he is talking to, but he ignores her. He then stands up and shuts the door without responding to her question. The disrespect is genuine. Later, at a welcome party, Anthony leaves to speak with some locals and a man who used to look after him as a child. Meanwhile, no one speaks to Rachel and everyone looks at her as if she owes them money. Helen, an older woman, approaches and introduces herself, and the two go for a walk. We learn from their conversation that Anthony is a well-known author who is also the pride of the town, and Rachel is a photographer. We also learn that moving the family to Finland was Anthony's idea, but the way Helen says it makes it appear as if Helen knows more than she is letting on. Helen then randomly and unprompted says, I'm not crazy, okay? And that's never a good sign. Helen takes Rachel's hand in hers and tells her that she had a dream about her and her son. She goes on to say that she knows he made a wish on the handprint, which has now come true. Anthony then arrives and tells her that the town wants to celebrate their wedding because it didn't happen in the town for years. Rachel is nervous about the two of them getting on a ceremonial wedding swing. She immediately begins to panic and searches for Elliot. When we hear Elliot call out to Nathan and run off, things get even worse. As Anthony's laughter gets distorted, Rachel has a panic attack and passes out. Incredibly she doesn't fall off the swing despite there not being any strange on it as far as I can tell. Anthony has stopped the swing, and everyone gathers around Rachel to try to calm her down. We cut to the family on a skiff returning to the house, I assume they have to cross the lake to get to town? Rachel is also holding a filthy Elliot, who appears to have gotten lost and thanks her for finding him. After putting Elliot to bed that night, 
Rachel and Anthony discuss his recent behavior, with Anthony agreeing to talk and spend some time with him doing guy stuff. We then cut to Elliot in bed, who is now sleeping on Nathan's bed. The next day while Elliot and Rachel run around the home playing, we see Anthony in his study, crying while looking at pictures of Nathan. That night after having another nightmare, Rachel goes to the kitchen and drinks milk straight from the cartoon and gets a little surprise. As she prepares to leave the kitchen, she returns her gaze to the window and notices Elliot standing outside by the swings. Rachel rushes outside, calling out to him, but he vanishes. She then notices him near another fence, but his face distorts and this becomes yet another nightmare. When she wakes up, she checks on Elliot and discovers him on Nathan's bed. When she wakes him up, he tells her his name is Nathan, not Elliot. The following day, Anthony and Rachel remove all of Nathan's belongings from the room and decide to take Elliot to the doctor. The doctor informs Rachel that Elliot is a reflection of her fears and emotions. He advises her to remain calm, but Rachel refuses, claiming that it isn't about her, and storms out with Elliot. Rachel has no choice but to seek advice from Helen. Helen reveals that the area has a rich pagan culture, which should raise some red flags if you've seen a few recent horror films. She then informs her that the eternal incubus, destroyer of all virtues is visiting Elliot at night and that it is not Nathan. Rachel apologizes and exits the room. Helen is awakened that night by sounds in her home, looking around, she inspects the bathroom but finds nothing. As she looks away from the camera, she begins to scream as if something is attacking her. Helen pays Rachel a visit the next day and tells her about the toilet incident, which was actually a dream, and calls it a warning. When Rachel dismisses the warning, Helen reveals that her husband was possessed many years ago and had an exorcism performed in town. Following that, any photograph of him had his face distorted, and he died a year later. Helen correctly assumes Rachel is having nightmares and informs her that they are warning signs, but Rachel dismisses them as her own mind playing tricks on her. Helen says everything when Rachel asks what the eternal incubus, destroyer of all virtues wants from her son. Given the circumstances, that's pretty ambiguous. Rachel later goes outside and takes pictures of Elliot on the swings after discovering an old camera. Elliot becomes enraged and tells her to stop, he then gets off the swings and runs away. That night Rachel wakes up to Elliot just outside her door who tells her to follow him as Nathan wants to see her. When Rachel tries to wake up Anthony, Elliot tells her, pretty confidently, that he won't wake up. For some reason, Rachel doesn't question this and follows him downstairs. Meanwhile, at Helen's home, it appears as if Helen is seeing this unfold in a dream as she yells out don't go while asleep. In the dining room, Elliot places a candle in front of a mirror and tells Rachel to concentrate. He then calls out to Nathan in the mirror and the candle starts to flicker. Who the hell taught this kid ghost rituals? Elliot tells Rachel to take the mirror and look at his reflection as he stands behind her. Rachel doesn't tell him to cut the creepy shit out and decides to do as he says. After looking at him in the mirror, she realizes that Elliot is holding the ball in a maze toy and it's looking pretty not burned to a crisp. Before she can say anything she hears something coming from the mirror and turns back to it. In a jump scare, black hands emerge from behind the mirror and grab her. This causes Rachel to jump back and drop the mirror, breaking it. The light then turns on and Anthony appears with some friends. He tells Rachel that all they want is Elliot for an exchange and they'll be able to have Nathan back. Anthony informs Rachel that the exchange has already occurred and that Elliot has left. Rachel flips out when she turns around and sees Elliot is no longer there. As she runs out of the dining room, she is grabbed by several members of the community and the doctor injects her with something, most likely a sedative. The next morning, Rachel awakens to the sound of Anthony and Elliot laughing downstairs. While the night before appears to have been another nightmare, Rachel notices the remnants of the broken mirror in the trash when she tosses out a tea bag. The family head into town to get a new vacuum as Anthony claims to have broken the old one and while there, Rachel secretly goes to the store to pick up the photos she had developed. Back at the house, she locks herself in the bathroom and reviews the photos revealing that Elliot isn't in the pictures. Elliot calls out to her from behind the door and asks to see the photos but Rachel refuses to tell him there's something wrong. Rachel rushes to Helen's and shows her the photos. Although Helen is confused at first, she believes this is the eternal incubus, destroyer of all virtues way of telling Rachel that he already has Elliot. Helen requests to see Elliot and the two head back to the house. On their way there, Rachel tells Helen about the night before, and about Anthony mentioning an exchange. Helen then realizes that the town is preparing to resurrect the devil and implies that Anthony's success as a writer and Nathan's death are part of the deal to bring the devil back. In order to complete the ritual Elliot has to be sacrificed and the devil will resurrect as Nathan who will attempt to convince Rachel to be its mother. A 
Arriving at the house, Rachel takes Helen to Elliot and introduces him. Helen is inexplicably shocked, tells Rachel she's sick and rushes out of the room. Rachel follows after but when the two reach the staircase, they're met by Anthony and the townsfolk. Anthony tells Rachel they're only there to help her and to not be scared. Apparently, Helen came prepared as she is packing and by that I mean she's got a gun. Wait, was her plan to shoot and kill Elliot? One of the group spots the gun and they all rush her as she fires a shot off. Meanwhile, other townsfolk rush Rachel as Anthony yells out to not hurt her. We then see the doctor administer a sedative, knocking Rachel out. As Rachel slips in and out of consciousness, she sees both Elliot and Nathan sitting on a chair. We then pan across some garbage and see Helen's head amongst it. Rachel wakes up by the lake surrounded by women in white robes and men in black robes. It's ritual time. Anthony appears in a gray robe and looks over to Rachel who appears to still be suffering the effects of the sedative as she can barely get up. One of the men hands Anthony a blade, which he accepts before hesitantly walking over to the sleeping Elliot. Elliot awakens just as Anthony is about to murder him, but Anthony slices his neck open anyway. Rachel screams and eventually collapses. One of the women collects Elliot's blood in a cup and feeds it to Rachel, who becomes pregnant immediately. Rachel is picked up by the group and dropped into the lake. Rachel awakens in her bed at home the next morning to hear Elliot calling out to her. When she asks where he is, he says he has no idea but that it's hot. Rachel attempts to leave the room, but we notice that someone has placed a chair on the other side, preventing her from opening the door. She eventually breaks through and sneaks upstairs as if she hadn't just made a huge noise. Meanwhile, downstairs, we see Anthony conversing with the doctor, and they apparently didn't hear shit. She searches the attic for Elliot and discovers him in a box. What? Rachel and Elliot sneak out of the house but Anthony sees them from the window and chases after them. Running through the woods, Rachel loses sight of Elliot and gets tackled by Anthony. Anthony starts to choke her in order to knock her out but Rachel is able to grab the rock and knocks him over the head. Climbing on top she punches him a few times and picks up a large rock, preparing to kill him. Anthony begs her to do it as he's tired of it but she sees Elliot and decides not to. Rachel runs over to Elliot and hugs him but as Anthony gets up, he reveals Elliot never existed. It's a twist. Anthony reveals that on the day of the accident he and Rachel got into a drunken fight. Angry at him, a drunk Rachel told Anthony she was leaving him and drove off with Nathan eventually getting into the accident that killed Nathan. The accident left a guilt-ridden and severely depressed Rachel who one day created the delusion that Nathan had a twin that survived the accident. Anthony decided to let her believe the delusion as it made her happy. When several neighbors noticed Rachel talking and playing outside with a child who wasn't actually there, they began to question her. Rachel was eventually taken to a mental institution after the police were called. After a while, Anthony couldn't stand seeing Rachel there any longer and decided to bring her to Finland, where she could live out her fantasy without anyone bothering them. Unfortunately, her delusions worsened and became more bizarre. While Anthony is explaining everything to Rachel, we see several flashbacks in which Rachel was originally seen talking to Elliot, but this time we see it from Anthony's perspective, and Rachel is talking to no one. We also see that Rachel dug up the ball in a maze toy, smashed the mirror on her own head, and that Helen called Rachel sick because Elliot wasn't actually present. As Rachel sobs, we see Elliot yelling at her not to listen to Anthony, but she gradually realizes it's the truth and Elliot vanishes. As she remembers the accident, she begins to walk towards Anthony, but Elliot jumps out and runs away, telling us that it didn't work. Rachel chases Elliot until they meet at a grain silo, with Anthony close behind. Inside Rachel reaches the summit and discovers a sobbing Elliot. Anthony climbs up and tells her Elliot isn't real after comforting him and telling him she believes in him. Rachel yells that he is, but when she turns around, he is no longer there. When she looks around, she notices him at the bottom of the silo, and Anthony decides to convince her that he isn't real by pulling the lever that releases the grain, effectively killing him. Rachel accidentally pushes Anthony out of the way, causing him to fall off the tower and die. She then dashes down the hill and digs for Elliot, but she doesn't find him. When she looks over at the dead Anthony, she has a flash of insight and realizes what has happened. We cut to Rachel in New York, where she is visiting Nathan and Anthony's gravestones. The film concludes with her getting into her car, where we see that she is still suffering from delusions, as she sees not only Elliot but also Anthony and Nathan in the car. I hope you liked it, subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Thanks for watching.